Hey everyone, so I'm editing my video right now on the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and I forgot to do my intro. And one thing I wanted to say was I timestamp all my videos. So if there's a certain section that you want to see, you can just scrub through the YouTube video and you can see exactly where you are. If you don't have that feature yet, you can go into the video description below and click on the time and YouTube should take you there. And I know comparison videos can be pretty long. So what I did was I put my application testing at the beginning portion of the video and then the general overview of both the products like the ports, the specs, the display. I left that toward the second half of the video. So if you wanna see that, um, I guess I'll have a timestamp of that on the screen, but I hope you guys do enjoy the video and much love. So starting off with the first category of video conferencing tools, I used Zoom, Skype, as well as WebEx. And what I did for this test was I shared my screen for five minutes, I sat in the meeting for five minutes, and when I was presenting, I was just going through a Google slide. So starting off with Skype, the MacBook Air was hitting a consistent 100 degrees Celsius as soon as I was sharing my screen. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, temperatures were sitting anywhere between 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. Moving on to Zoom, there was a little bit of an improvement, but the MacBook Air was sitting anywhere, anywhere between 88 degrees and 95 degrees, and then the MacBook Pro was sitting anywhere between 60 and 70 degrees. Moving on to WebEx, which I think was probably the most interesting out of the tools, the MacBook Air was sitting at 70 to 75 degrees, whereas on the Pro, it was sitting anywhere between 65 and 70 degrees. And as you can see, overall, the MacBook Pro is definitely more calm, cool, and collective, whereas on the MacBook Air, it just seemed to really struggle in this department, especially when it came to sharing screen. Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a little insight on the test that I'm doing right now. So the MacBook Pro just reached about eight minutes and a half of screen sharing and I want you guys to hear the fan noise on the MacBook Air because right now the fans are maxed out and they are struggling so take a listen um, so it's been at this temperature for quite some time it hasn't dipped below 95 and if you want to take a listen to the Pro I'm going to remove this so there's no noise that you can hear so if you guys are doing any video con conferencing and you are thinking about using the macbook air i only have two tabs open in the background um it's just some google slides and a research paper i honestly want to say I don't recommend getting this device because it is very loud my recommendation is if you are doing a lot of meetings online look to spend an extra money on the MacBook Pro because it does perform better in that department the MacBook Pro also does in the video conferencing tools is that the touch bar actually shows the mute and your video feed so if you want to just mute your mic you can just tap on the touch bar and I think that's actually really cool instead of clicking on the screen you can just touch the touch bar to mute and share your video feed Moving on to the next category for Mozilla Firefox for my programmers. They wanted me to do a compilation test. By the way, Firefox, if you could update your documentation, it's about two, three years old. It doesn't really work with Catalina. So I did make my own guide. If you guys want to follow that, it's in the description below. Even though the MacBook Air has a more modern chip in it, the MacBook Pro definitely beats it in a pretty convincing way. So the MacBook Air did it in about an hour and a half, whereas on the MacBook Pro, eighth generation it did it in just over an hour so if you are a programmer who does a lot of compilations or things that are really uh complex i guess if that makes sense um, i would say just spend the extra money on the macbook pro but in my experience just using visual studio code running python um, i had a couple tabs open in the background i also tested out intellij and tableau those are some of the programs that i've used and i found no problems on either computer but you guys wanted the compilation test, so I guess you can make your judgment off the scores that you've seen. Also with this test, I wanna show you guys a couple clips on some of the findings that I had. Both fans were maxed out at certain points in the test, and you guys can take a listen. But this is the eighth gen i5 MacBook Pro, and the fans are also audible as well. So take a listen. So next up is media consumption and what I did for this test was I watched one hour of Money Heist inside Google Chrome on Netflix and I also watched a couple of videos on YouTube. 
Both of these computers did it relatively well, but you will get lower temperatures on the Pro. And I also like the speakers more on the Pro when it comes to watching movies and TV shows. It just sounds a little bit more professional. I don't want to use that word. More accurate, if that makes sense. MacBook Air, the speakers are good. I'm not going to discredit them, but compared to the MacBook Pro, they do sound more tinny and it just sounds like there's no real bass in them. Next up is video editors, and I know you guys are pretty excited about this because I know you really wanted to utilize the 10th generation processor with the better graphics. However, what you'll see in the chart on what I'm about to show you, the MacBook Pro definitely still beats the MacBook Air in this category when it came to rendering not only 1080p but 4K. And I know the numbers are pretty low already in terms of the time, but I will say if you are editing in 1080p or 720p, you should be perfectly fine on both these products. However, when you do move up to 4K, they both do still seem to struggle a little bit when it comes to editing within the timeline. I would get the rainbow spinning circle occasionally, and I would have to close iMovie, open it back up to, I guess, free up the RAM. So I would say that just sticking to 1080p and 720p, both these products should be good for you. But if you are buying this device for video editing, I would say that you should probably go towards the MacBook Pro. Next up are my gamers, and what the test they wanted me to do was Minecraft and The Sims 4. And Minecraft on the air was very bad. Um, I was getting anywhere between 25 to 35 frames per second, and I was just getting a lot of stuttering whenever I was walking. And even though this is using 10th generation processors with a better graphics, guys, I'm telling you, the 8th generation on the MacBook Pro performs much better. I was getting 60 frames on Minecraft. It was a buttery smooth 60 frames per second consistently, no stuttering at all. So if you want an enjoyable experience on Minecraft, I would say spend the extra money on the MacBook Pro. Moving on to Sims 4, little side note, I haven't played Sims since Sims 3 in like 2010, and they had a sale this weekend. It was only like five bucks. Highly recommend getting Sims 4. It's a really good game. Uh, but for both these products, I would say it's pretty much once again dead even. The MacBook Air did it well, as well as the MacBook Pro. But I would say temperatures overall on the MacBook Pro were better when Sims 4 was running in the background. But the Air played the game just as good in the same graphic settings, which was low. And I think you can get an enjoyable experience on the MacBook Air and the Pro. For my audio people, unfortunately, I'm not well versed in audio. When using GarageBand and just throwing beats on there, um, I did have pretty much the same experience on both. However, I would say that the MacBook Pro with the touch bar integration, it was a much more inviting experience, if that makes sense. And I think the speakers on the MacBook Pro will probably work better for you because I think with the HDR speakers, it's going to give you a more accurate representation of what the sounds are going to sound like, if that makes sense. I would say your mileage will pretty much vary. If you guys can give me a better test or a DAW or DAW file that you guys are telling me to do testing for, then I can go ahead and do that. But for my personal, I guess, rational thought is I would just go for the MacBook Pro. So now for the basic overview on the differences between these two devices. So starting off with the ports, they have two Thunderbolt 3 ports as well as a headphone jack on the opposite side. Moving on to the build quality, they are both built exceptionally well. There is essentially no flex on the keyboard when I'm typing, but I will say I like the overall design of the MacBook Air better. I like how it tapers off to the side and it just makes it a lot easier to hold in the hand. And I think that's how it gets its lightness. Moving on to the MacBook Pro, I do think this device is also built really well with this boxy design. It definitely feels a little bit more premium with its heavier weight. And I wanna get into the biggest difference between these two right now. So the keyboards are pretty much the same, but the function row key is what separates these two laptops. So the function row is just your standard F1 through 12 on the MacBook Air. But on the Pro, we have a touch bar, which also serves as your function row key, but it does change on the application that you're using. And I thought it was a little bit of gimmick at first when Apple announced this years ago, and I've never used it, but using it over the weekend, I much prefer the touch bar over the function row key. It's having a bar that's able to dynamically adapt to the application that you're using to make it a better experience for you rather than just having a static function row key serves to have more value. So I wanna give the keyboard over to the MacBook Pro in this department. So moving on to the trackpads, they both are essentially the same, 
but the trackpad on the MacBook Pro is just a tad bit bigger, but I'm happy with both sizes of the trackpad. Now I want to open up both these laptops so you guys can see the inside of them. So with the MacBook Air, it has one fan and it does dissipate heat out the back because it's passively cooling the system. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, it has a fan with the heatsink attached to it. And with this cooling design, it's able to keep the CPU at a lower temperature overall compared to the Air. Now looking at these laptops side by side, you can see that the fan on the Pro is noticeably bigger. And with that heatsink, like I said before, temperatures on the Pro are going to be overall lower. Moving on to the unlocking features, they both have the same touch ID, but like I've said in my previous reviews, if you do have an Apple Watch linked to your iCloud, if you just open up the laptop, they will be able to unlock automatically. So that's a really nice feature. It's pretty much hands-free. It's not Face ID, but you don't have to worry about touching your laptop to log in. So hands-free approach to unlocking. So next I wanna talk about display and overall, I think they are both really good, but objectively speaking, the MacBook Pro has a better display because it does get brighter and the colors are more accurate. But I would say that I'm perfectly fine with the MacBook Air display if I don't need that color accuracy. But if you are like a photo editor or if you are a designer and you need to have your colors be accurate, I would spend that extra money and go with the Pro. Next up, I wanna talk about the camera as well as the built-in microphone. So I will show you guys a clip and you guys can tell me which one sounds better and looks So this better. is the recording of MacBook Pro. I'm not sure how the microphone sounds, but judging off the camera quality, I still don't know how Apple makes very good cameras on their smartphones, but are just neglecting their laptops. So let me know what you guys think. All right, so now this is the camera quality and the built-in microphone on the MacBook Air. Uh, for some reason, it looks a little bit more grainy, but I still think overall the camera is pretty bad. Like I said before, I don't know how Apple makes really good cameras in their iPhones, but they're just neglecting their laptops. So let me know what you guys think, which one sounds better in the comments. So next, I want to do a test on the speakers and you guys can tell me which one sounds better. And then I'll give my own judgment as well after about a minute of playing music. So I will play music on the MacBook Air first. So here we go. On the, to the Pro. Air. Back to the Pro. And back to the Air. Okay, so now I want to give you guys my own perspective on it since I am listening to it in person. Um, even though the air sounds louder overall, no pun intended, it sounds like the speakers are just giving me air. There doesn't really seem to be any bass, but the speakers are good. But comparatively speaking, looking at the MacBook Air and listening to it, the speakers just sound much more rich. There is more bass and more punch even though it is quieter, I do prefer the speakers on the MacBook Air overall. It really does seem like they are trying to recreate the proper tones and I guess loudness and representation of what the artist was going for. And Apple does claim that the MacBook Pro has high dynamic range stereo speakers where it's just regular stereo speakers on the Air. So I think that's where the biggest, the biggest difference is between the two. So if you are an audio person and you are making music or making beats, I would say probably spend the extra money on the MacBook Pro because you are going to be getting, I guess, a more higher end speaker, even though it is quieter. So next up, I'm going to be throwing up some benchmark scores. I'll go over this really quick because like I always say on this channel, benchmarks don't directly translate to real world applications. So the MacBook Air has a better single core performance in Geekbench, and then the MacBook Pro has a better score in the multi-core. But I would say overall, the chip that you're going to be getting more value out of is in the MacBook Pro. It's just a more powerful processor overall. Moving on to metal, you do see the MacBook Air takes a tremendous lead over the MacBook Pro. And even though it is a higher score, I didn't really notice it too much when it came to doing a lot of testing. I think with the overall cooling design and just the stronger processor inside the MacBook Pro, you're gonna get more value out of this chip than the MacBook Air. 
Now this is the hardest part of this entire review. It is the which one you should buy and what do I recommend. So I'm gonna start off with, with what I recommend and then get into pricing next. So what I recommend is getting 16 gigabytes of RAM in both of these. And once you get 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's only a $200 difference. In terms of the storage, it really just depends on your use case. Do you need a lot of local storage or not? And pricing between these two in terms of storage is identical. So even though there is a $200 difference, I would say that your money is better well spent if you just save this $200 and go over to the MacBook Pro. Even though you are getting older hardware, just in terms of real world application usage from my testing, the MacBook Pro still outperforms the MacBook Air. So that pretty much applies to some European countries as well as North American countries because what I've discovered is in some countries that don't have Apple stores or Apple's not as common, Apple doesn't really let you have that choice to configure your own laptop and you have to buy through third party party sellers who already have pre-built systems for you. So in that case, if the price delta is still around $200, if you do the conversion, I would say still save that money for the MacBook Pro. If you are a student, like a high school student or college student, um, I would say if your parents are not letting you get the MacBook Pro because it is more expensive, you can try to negotiate with them and say that you'll for fork over that extra $200 for a much better computer overall, or you can show them this video. I do think that the MacBook Pro is just a better overall experience for most people. And that kind of makes me wonder what the Air is really designed for. But I will say if you aren't doing a lot of meetings online or classes online, I guess where you have to do a video using one of the video conferencing tools like Zoom or WebEx or Skype, then the MacBook Air is definitely still a good computer overall. Another thing I wanna know is that gold is only available in the MacBook Air lineup, but if you really want gold, I would say just go to dbrand.com, get a skin, the gold skin, and put it on the MacBook Pro, and there's your gold. But the MacBook Air does have, has its place, but I do think with the 10th generation processors, it does lag a little bit when you want to do some more intensive stuff. But if you're doing just light workloads, like a light, light very light i think i might just coin it like apple light workload because i don't know the air is really puzzling to me now with the whole video conferencing tools but i guess that really just comes with being a professional so if you are someone who is in your career and you're doing meetings online the macbook pro is a better overall experience but if you are a college student and you're not doing too much with the video conferencing tools that I mentioned before, then I think the Air is still a good buy for you. But I think if you want a computer that will last you a little bit longer, save that extra $200 and get the MacBook Pro. So that's my rational thinking and comparison between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. Base i5, eighth generation, and the 10th generation i5 and the MacBook Air. I will be posting more comparison videos throughout the week. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like. It really does help out the channel. And as always guys, much love. This has been the longest weekend of my whole life. Ah, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Oh, I forgot to talk about how much bigger the iPad is. iPad? Yep, yeah, my brain is done.